Hello friends and welcome, it's Sarah Liz and I have a fun shaker card project for you. There is a column of a shaker that goes from the top to bottom of this card and I'm so excited to share it with you. This is the Gable House box from Pixie Dust Designs and I've used this in another video, but today we're really just using the add-on. It's the Gingerbread House add-on that has tons of adorable little dies for Christmas. So I'm gonna flip this over and kind of show you what's in this kit and you can dress it up and create a gingerbread house or I made just like an elegant Christmas house with this. Um, but we're gonna focus on these dies today um, because those are gonna be, for the most part, our shaker bits. I've cut out the Christmas tree from that set and it has four pieces for the tree itself, which is great because it really helps you to add in a little bit of ink blending and layering to add some depth and dimension to this tree. But then there's also the base tree. So if you didn't wanna do the ink blending, you could absolutely skip that. And then they just nestle right against each other on that base tree. And then there are three little like squiggly bits that I have cut out of some white glitter cardstock just to add a little bit of like frosting or snow to the edge of your tree. And I'm gonna go ahead and add those on there as well. This is gonna be part of my focal point for my sentiment um, and all of that on the card. I find for pieces like this, it's much easier to put the glue on the larger piece instead of trying to like pick that up with tweezers and then not get my fingers in the glue. Um, and so my pickup tool is really, really helpful. I'm just gonna put together kind of one of each type of piece for you to kind of show you what I did. This is a snowflake, but the backer piece kind of makes it look like it's a sugar cookie. Maybe it's supposed to be a sugar cookie. That would make total sense. And then I have a little white glitter cardstock um, that I've used for the snowflake part of it. Uh, and then I love these little sort of peppermint twirls. I made a bunch of those and actually I stacked them up a little thicker. So the colorful piece in the back um, is too thick on all of those. And then these gumdrops might be my favorites. So those are stacked three deep. And when I do something like this, I just put glue on two of them and then I pick them up with the wax end of my pickup tool. And I just sort of pause in between them to let that glue grab a little bit. And it goes really, really quickly. And then I sort of straighten them out with my fingers. I also added a little bit of stickles on all of those. So they look like they have that dusting of sugar all over the top of them. To make this column shaker, I have two pieces of cardstock that will essentially be the front of my card and leave this gap in the middle. One is three quarters of an inch by five and a half and one is two and a half inches by five and a half. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I just kind of flipped this over and I'm adding a little bit of double-sided tape on either side because I am gonna wrap my acetate clear around this panel and then I'm gonna double up some foam tape. Um, this is not super thick foam tape to start with. So in the end, I think I probably have about three millimeters of foam tape. And it's really easy to just sort of double it up this way. And then I can also powder the sides of it if I want to, to keep my shaker bits from sticking to the foam. And then uh, I am going to, on the other side, where I'm gonna leave that little column for my shaker stuff, um, I am going to make sure that this foam tape overhangs on either edge. I want to make sure I'm getting a really, really tight fit. So I am going to remo remove the release paper from one side and lay that onto my card. And then I will trim it right along the edge of the cardstock. So I'm going to get a nice snug fit here. On the other side, I'm just holding my two and a half inch piece of blue cardstock there. And I will use my pencil to try to help me kind of figure out how far is that gonna go? I could have measured it. I didn't feel like <laughs> measuring today. Um, so some little tick marks with my pencil are gonna help me out. And then I will do the exact same thing. And I'm gonna run that foam tape overhanging the edges of my white cardstock. I'm using a pretty heavyweight white cardstock here because I don't want it to buckle as I'm wrapping my acetate for my shaker. I'll trim that off and then the acetate comes next. I have this thin little piece of like recycled packaging. It's not anything fancy. And I'm gonna remove the double-sided tape just from one side of the back panel, okay? I'm gonna lay that into that double-sided adhesive and then I'll flip the whole thing over. I'm gonna remove the release paper 
for my double-sided tape, but I wanna make sure as I'm laying this down that I'm not gonna get any wrinkles in it. I'm not gonna have any problems. I'm double checking to make sure it's gonna wrap all the way around because I knew this one was a tight fit. Maybe leave yourself a little more room than I did. So I'm gonna begin by laying it just into the very top of that foam tape. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder and just kind of drag it slowly down. I'm not pressing super hard, but this way, I'm not accidentally ending up laying down that acetate where I don't want it. That's how I'm avoiding getting wrinkles on it. I need to add my shaker bits before I seal that up. So I have a couple of peppermint pieces. I'm gonna end up adding a few more. My gumdrop pieces, a couple of those sugar cookies, and I'm gonna sort of alternate as I'm dropping them in. Again, all of those um, are more than one layer thick. I like them thicker because they have a little more weight to them. I think they shake better. And so I'm gonna add those kind of in, and then I am gonna add just a few little confetti pieces um, that are like a sparkly, glittery something. I just thought it would be fun to have a little extra pop of sparkle going on in there. Then I will flip this over and carefully remove the remainder of the release paper and wrap the acetate into that. And it's really easy, but I love the effect of this sort of infinity shaker column. So I have double thick foam tape here again, and I am just gonna fill in the remaining side of my card. Um, and this isn't anything fancy, right? I'm just removing the release paper and making sure I fill in all of those spaces. And then I've put this into my MISTI to try to help me get the placement right on the rest of the pieces. So I have two pieces of light blue cardstock and I've double checked them before I'm trying to lay them down to make sure that I'm not gonna have any of my cardstock or my foam tape showing uh, because I can't trim off anything from the card base, right? If I trim anything, the acetate's gonna have a hole in it. So I just tuck this into the corner, add a little bit of glue, right? To give me that touch of wiggle room. And then I can take that other piece of cardstock, right? Card base down in the corner, other piece of cardstock, and I'll just lay it into the corner as well. And then I know that I'm gonna get my fit right every time. So once I get that all pressed down and securely fastened, you can see I've got this lovely sort of pop of bright uh, sort of non-traditional Christmas colors happening on my shaker, and I can go ahead and add that onto a card base. You do need to do this on a panel first because otherwise you don't have a way um, to really secure that acetate that isn't likely to come off. So once I add that on with some wet glue, I can start trying to figure out like, what am I gonna add for my sentiment? What am I gonna add for the rest of my focal images? I cut out a circle um, from some white shimmer cardstock, and this is where I'm gonna add my tree and I'll tuck my candy cane kind of at an angle back behind there. And then there are these little poinsettias. They are so cute. There's a couple of layers to them. I'll just add a little glue to the center of them and then put the smaller piece on top of the larger one and you can see how you set them sort of off kilter from the first one, if that makes sense. Um, and then the poinsettia looks really, really full. I also have cut a star from some pink glitter cardstock. I wanted just a simple strip sentiment for this. So this is the More Holiday Sentiments. It was a free printable on my channel in October. And I am just trimming this out so that the tick marks reach the edge on either side. And then I will visually connect those tick marks um, on the top and bottom of my blade and trim that. And then I flip it to make sure I have a 90 degree angle. And then from there, I can trim them out really, really quickly. I'm just lining up the bottom tick mark with the edge of my blade. Um, and I am gonna grab this sentiment that says, "'Tis the season to be jolly." And I just use the inside of the finger guard of my trimmer to help me get equal margins on either side of the sentiment. It's about a quarter inch, and so I'm gonna lay that onto a 3 8 inch thick piece of cardstock, just a strip, and then I come in and I very carefully trim tiny slivers off of that until it looks about even. I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing some of these pieces down flat, but there are quite a few layers of cardstock here because I use really heavyweight cardstock. So I've got my candy cane at an angle here. And then to put my tree down, I'm adding some one millimeter thin foam wherever the candy cane won't be. It's just a tiny little bit of lift um, to help keep it from looking kind of cattywampus. I have a lot of lift happening to create my column shaker. So I didn't really wanna add more bulk on here. 
Uh, I put a little bit of wet glue on top of that foam just to give me some wiggle room as I'm trying to get everything lined up. And then I'll add my pink glitter star with a little bit of that thin foam as well. The other pieces I'm gonna go ahead and glue down flat and at some point <laughs> I'll get brave enough to glue down that circle. This is the part of the card where I panic, right? I'm like, what if I make a mistake now and then I have to start all over? I, it doesn't happen, it never happens. I'm really <laughs> pretty meticulous with these things, but sometimes I can't help but worry. All right, so we're adding down those final little pieces and then I'm gonna add my sentiment kind of right over the top of that tree. I have a tiny little bit of foam on either end of the sentiment because remember we popped the tree up a little bit as well. The foam will just help keep either end of the sentiment level with the middle of it. Once I get all that on there, finally it is time to add this circle to my card. I'm feeling confident enough now uh, that everything is gonna be okay. So I'm gonna add that overlapping the little column of my shaker a little bit and that will finish up my card. It's got some really good movement in that shaker. It's got lots of shine from the glitter and then there's that white pearl cardstock. I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you'll give a column shaker a try. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and I will see you soon.